Good morning. As you can see, I cut myself shaving this morning, but uh, that will not deter me. I'm still here to do our study of Psalm 93 this morning. And I love the theme of this psalm, which is the Lord reigns. Today, uh, this psalm is short, but it's powerful. It's a song of praise. And again, it reflects the fact that in these chaotic times, we know that our God is still on the throne and he reigns over all the earth, over my life and yours and all of history. Let's pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, bless us as we look at Psalm 93, as we celebrate the fact that you are the king and ruler of the universe and of our lives. What comfort that should give us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me uh, read the psalm for you, and then I found a little devotional that I thought was very good I'd like to share with you. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. That's the end of Psalm 93, and what a magnificent testimony it is to the reign and the power of our God. This song extols God as the absolute sovereign and almighty king, the everlasting ruler of all things in an age when this is openly and brazenly contested, when man in his puny, puny strength and utter folly is seated on the throne of the world and of salvation, the psalmist makes it plain that there is only one Lord of the universe. Jehovah, the great, I am that I am. This truth is foundational to the whole of Scripture, and it is foundational to the whole of our worship. If our God is not the Lord of all, why worship him? If he is not almighty, why bow down before him and yield ourselves to him? If he is not sovereign over creation and all creatures, why sing praises to him? If he does not reign over all nations, and leaders, good and evil, why, why extol him as Lord if he is not on the throne when it comes to suffering and sorrows, problems and pain, trials and tribulations? Why pray to him, seeking his help and comfort? If he is not the majestic maker and possessor of all things, why present our offerings before him, acknowledging that we are stewards of all we have? If he is not the sovereign king, why listen to his law and strive to obey it? If our God is not the absolute king, in the realm of salvation, why hear and believe the gospel of his Son? You see, all our worship centers on the truth that God is the Lord, the Lord of all, the only Lord. So today as we come before him with our praise and prayers and gifts and, 
as we come to hear his word, let us do so in the full consciousness that our God is the sovereign Lord, our almighty King. And knowing this, let us be holy as he is holy, for as the one who reigns and is clothed with majesty, holiness fits his house. Isn't that a powerful devotional? Let me read the psalm one more time. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. That's why we worship him. That's why we serve him. That's why we love him and obey him and give him all that we are. Because he is Lord. Look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday, Labor Day weekend, for our time of worship together. Have a great day.